Okay, welcome to this video. I usually say Stampscapes video, but this is going to be more of an Art Foamies video featuring some Stampscapes uh, designs here. Okay, so these Art Foamies stamps are foam stamps. It's literally what they are, and they are a laser cut or burnt. I don't know how the, whatever the correct term it, it, it is for it, but they are created uh, via laser, I don't know, whatever, burning. And um, they have partnered with me. Thank you so much, Art Foamies, for the opportunity to create these different incarnations of stamps. Now, look, look at the <laughs> Lakeside Cabin Art Foamy stamp here. Look how much bigger it is than my rubber version, okay? So the Art Foamies, the thing about that is or them is that you can make them in larger sizes that just would not be practical for a rubber format okay um, for many different reasons uh, I don't want to get into the technical part but it has to do with you know the the size of the plates that you would need the etchings etc and just the practicality of stamping out and a rubber version of certain types of stamps at a certain type of size it gets very difficult but the foamies uh, just the format of that foam really allows you to go for some really large um, types of impressions okay in various types of surfaces even ones with a lot of surface um, area like mine okay now i don't know what i'm doing right here with the foamies i'm just this is a video where i'm experimenting around um, with some of the techniques that i've seen used which is you know i haven't watched a ton of videos but um, the maker of the art farmies thanks so much kp um, showed me some different types of techniques and she sent me these ink tents uh, blocks right here which are that um i don't know what are water water color sticks or whatnot and I wanted to try some of that with this. I really like, the thing about these foamies is it really opens up some opportunities for some real painterly styles of looks, okay? And you can do this kind of watercolory type of approach directly on the foam and get those types of impressions, all right? But like I said, I don't know what I'm doing with this uh, technique right here, but I thought I'd just kind of play around. So I wet uh, the foam down a little bit and applied some of that uh, ink tense uh, color on there in a couple different um, different versions of color and I'm going for my impression right here it's very easy to get an impression with the foam it contours to the paper any type of irregularities underneath there so again I applied some of that um, color directly onto the foam and then I sprayed it with some water to get that real watercolory look but doesn't I mean that looks like a watercolor you know painting or something like that in this case it's a watercolor print of course all right so adding some more tone down laying down some of this uh, paint over the top of the foam I don't know how you know how, how wet it has to be when using these in intense pieces but I thought I'd give it a try here just a little bit drier and that gave me a stronger impression because it was less watery okay now I mean if we did this on like watercolor paper I think it would look really amazing you know to have that texture down there it would look like you took a paintbrush or something and you painted those trees in there um, I don't know there's a lot of uh, experimentation uh, to come for me because you can dip into other types of media and not just your kind of crafting media as you know your um, dye based inks your pigment inks uh, I wouldn't use a solvent ink on this foam I think it could potentially harden it but you'd have to ask uh, art foamies about that about um, the types of inks that um, or media just in general paints you know that you can use on these foamies I think you can even use like acrylic paints or something like that I'm not quite sure you know um, it would just have to be something that you can clean up I'd imagine to get out of the grooves of the foam okay so I'm going on with some hybrid inks right here um, Moonlight Duo inks provided by uh, the Art Foamies manufacturer. They make these Moonlight Duos, which I've used in the past, which are hybrid inks. Okay, I thought I would give it a try here, um, just for some background types of applications. Um, I'm working on a full-size piece of cardstock here. 
Uh, it's a semi-gloss cardstock. And later on, I'll, I'll try the... Um, if you hang out and watch this or scroll ahead, I'll be working on a piece of uh, glossy cardstock with some dye basting. You know, I thought I would give the, you know, our traditional media a try. This is traditional art, you know, uh, card media too, with the uh, the hybrid inks too. But the, uh, you know, those um, ink tents, uh, watercolor ones are something that I haven't used in stamping before. I've heard about them, but I've just give, never given them a try. Okay, so just giving this this swatchy background, I wanted to get kind of a, you know, a real painterly kind of look going on this background here. I wanted to go for the kind of a bolder application of media, and uh, Art Foamy sent me um, some circles that I thought I would try um, to stamp a moon out in right over the top of this blue. Not that it looks that way, but when I'm doing this type of thing, I'm thinking of those Eric Carle children's books with the big bold shapes and everything. I always love those looks and kind of real painterly streaky kinds of a uh, I don't know maybe paper cutouts. I'm not sure how he made a, a lot of those types of things but uh, just super bold very colorful types of looks. Uh, things that I don't usually do with rubber stamps you know with a kind of more tighter detail you know, super high tonal range, textural types of forms. Um, I usually don't work too loose with them um, in a real painterly style, but that's what I was going for in this piece right here. Sometimes, I mean, I do that sometimes in the backgrounds, but when you stamp over the top of it in your highly detailed stampscape stamps, rubber stamps, you know, it's not looking like a real kind of super bold, you know, Eric Carle-ish type of look. Okay. If you don't know who Eric Carle is, you, if you've ever, I don't know, bought children's picture books over the years, um, you'd probably know who I'm talking about. Um, you might not know his name, but you've probably seen his books. You know, big, huge range of uh, children's uh, picture books with real bold types of uh, imagery, a lot of animals and things like that. You know, um, the Hungry Caterpillar, you know, example is one of his books. You might have heard that one. Okay, so going on with this real streaky kind of application here, these hybrid inks are really fantastic. Um, they're very surface oriented. They're a combination of both pigment and dye, so that pigment ink uh, kind of component stays very surface oriented. So if you go over the top of some of those darker applications, unlike dye-based inks, which are really staining the surface, this stains, but it also leaves a lot of that pigment ink uh, component on the surface. So you know, if you go over it with a water or something like that, you might be wiping off a lot of that ink off the surface. Okay, so I have my um, background set there and that real kind of swatchy brush, you know, form look. And here I'm stamping out these trees in a black hybrid ink. And I think it looks pretty good. I don't know, you know, it looks as detailed as the true smaller version. This is like a 200% version of that, uh, of that, you know, spruce large. And I'm trying this uh, hybrid white here. I wasn't quite sure if it was going to look too see-through, you know. I figured some of that blue is going to show through because there's no white crafting inks out there that are really opaque. I guess you could do that if you wanted to with a gesso or something like that, you know. Um, gesso is a water-based uh, paint, you know, if you wanted to do something like that, you know, with these foamies, I don't th see it as being any problem. Going back over it again with some additional black uh, impressions here. Now, you know, I want to try these impressions, like some trees in the background and like in white on a, uh, I don't know, whatever scenario like this too. Or perhaps some of these trees in maybe a, a, a dark blue or something like that. I think it would look like they're in the background in this uh, color scheme. But I really like these impressions. The impression qualities look fantastic. And especially at that size. I wasn't quite sure. Um, you know, again, I'll probably say this over and over throughout this video, but I just wasn't sure about the um, retention of detail. Um, not only with... Uh, a stamp twice the size of the rubber, but also foam, foam, you know? I mean, how how detailed can a piece of foam be? Well, I guess 
pretty detailed. <laughs> I'm happy to say. Okay, so this is a... I don't know, I was going for kind of a paint, more painterly look on this... Um, I don't know, what you, whatever you call it. It's not a card anymore. Like a full 8.5 by 11, is it? I don't know, whatever. Painting, whatever. Project, we'll call it. But I wanted to go and splatter paint in the background anyway, just to give it that, you know, that painterly look in, in the form of another texture. Big, huge scene, so I'm, you know, I have more Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White in this uh, toothbrush than I normally have. But I don't know, pretty fun splatter painting a big 8.5 by 11. Uh, normally I'm splatter painting much smaller pieces. Occasionally I'll work full size um in you know making my cards and whatnot but uh i don't know this feels different you know just from the size of the boulder imagery okay glossy cardstock and dye based inks now when i'm applying this amount of uh ink uh, you know to create a background i am not dipping into a pad i'm just putting some uh ray inker fluid this is a me memento london fog on a piece of paper towel, you can put it on a sponge, whatever you want. Go with something pretty absorbent, though. And laying this out, it's getting fairly dry on my paper towel pretty quickly because the, you know, the dye-based inks are going to be absorbing into the surface and staining the surface of this paper pretty fast. All right, so. Now my paper towel is fairly dry. I am going for some variation on here because this one I am going to be stamping um, uh, my lakeside cabin right over the top. Let me see, what color of blue was this that I used? I think it was a, um, trying to remember. Oh, Paris Dusk Memento, okay. I don't even have that in pad form. I just bought the reinker for it because I figured I'm not going to be any any. When, whenever I'm going for a new type of color, in inks these days, if I'm not going to be stamping out imagery with it and I'm just going to be coloring something with it, I don't bother with the pad. I just get the reinker for it. Saves saves me space. Oh, saves me money too. I don't have to get the pad, right? You know, again, you're just going to be putting a few drops of it on your applicator. So, and then you get a lot more ink uh, in your re-inker fluid than in a pad version. You know, if you if you want both of them, then you can go with both of them. But like I said, if I'm just using it to, uh, you know, ink a scene, color a scene, or whatever card, all I need is the re-inker because I'm going to be putting it on. Uh, you know, whatever applicator I'm using anyway, so I don't need to dip into a pad for that. I just, you know, I can get so much more coverage just using the reinker. Okay, now this is using a different blue here. It was the Lulu Lavender. Okay, I'm trying to remember. I don't use some of these colors too often, so I'm pretty shocked I remember that color from doing this uh, card uh, half an hour ago. <laughs> okay, so adding this in. Again, I want to keep it a little bit streaky because, uh, you know, it's supposed to be kind of this moody, atmospheric, I don't know, setting for my lake. I don't know, maybe pre-dawn or something like that or dusk. I don't know, whatever you want it to be. Look at the size of this stamp right here. I thought, oh, maybe I want to go with the lakeside uh, uh, cove large, but I thought, eh, let's just stick with the... Uh, the lakeside cabin here. I want to do, when I originally started doing this one, I started thinking, okay, I want to put that light in the window coming out of the, uh, the cabin. So, uh, uh, that was the idea when I did that background. I don't know. Then I kind of thought, oh, I want to try that lakeside cove, but I thought, oh, let's go back with this one and just stamp this out. Look how big this is. This is an eight, an 11 inch side by, you know, end-to-end uh, -end stamp, all right? And look how easy this is to stamp out in terms of impression quality, okay? No problem. In fact, I, I don't know, it probably gave its impression much faster than that, but I don't know, I'm using these for the first time, so I just don't know, you know, how long I should press down. Did I get it all, you know, type of thing? But that foam, it contours, you know, very easily. 
um, to the paper. All right, stamping this out. And again, I'm using that black hybrid pad just because, you know, it's water soluble. I shouldn't be having, have any problem using a dye base pad. All right, you're just going for some of these trees in the foreground. Now, if you didn't know it, I mean, you just think this, you know, this card right here is a quarter page card, but you can see by my hands, you know. I don't have a gigantic hands or anything like that, but they're not like microscopic or anything like that, or tiny. So this is, uh, like I said, it's a, you know, it's an eight and a half by 11. It's a full size piece of paper, but you can get some pretty good and in, in quick impressions, easy impressions, um, stamping with these foamies. So it's a different feeling, you know, um, kind of not using rubber. There's a little boating fisherman I'm going to use in here. You got to check what the Art Foamies um, website, um, not the Stampscapes website, in terms of uh, the available Stampscapes imagery on there. Just and again, there's just some different sizes. Uh, you got to check with them as far as their initial kind of um, line of stamps. Here's the Reed's Large that I always love using. All my pieces, given the uh, the boating fisherman, a little bit of a or the fisherman and boat, a um, little bit of a, a cover for the, the fish to be hiding in. Early bird gets the worm. <laughs> so we got that, I don't know, stamped out. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Now, um, I usually add a lot of um, color to my trees with the Marvy 1500 series of markers. Coloring a big tree like this, I don't know if you can do that because it would be, the foam would be somewhat absorbent, okay? And maybe by the time you colored the whole thing, I don't know, maybe another part of the stamp would be dry. If you were doing like the whole spruce large here, which is, you know, like I said, it's like double the size of a, you know, mine. Here I'm holding up this lakeside cabin here next to the, uh, the Art Foamies version of it. You know, just to show you the scale, just the sheer kind of, you know, size. So on something like these, you know, you can do, I don't know, whatever, decorative wall paintings or something like that. You can stamp on canvas. You can stamp on um, gessoed panels. It, You can stamp on a lot of different surfaces with this. So we're not just talking card making, although you could use them for card making. You know, you'd have some pretty big imagery on, you know, if you're doing like a quarter page card or something like that, if you want to go for some like really huge scale. But I don't know, all kinds of different possibilities and media to use with these art foamy stamps. So stay tuned for some future kind of experiments with it. And I can't wait to try all these new types of things out. Okay, thanks so much for watching.